Reading stations or centers are really common in the elementary grades and particularly in the primary grades, but are they appropriate at the middle or high school level? That's what we're talking about in this video. Hi everybody, I'm Lee Hall from Literacy Teachers and I'm all about giving you the tools you need to inspire, motivate, and change how your students read and write for academic success. Today we are talking about centers, right? Literacy centers or literacy stations, right? And these are things that are really prevalent in the primary grades, um, particularly in K2, maybe a little bit in third grade, not so much in the middle and high school level necessarily. And the question that's been posed to me is, are these centers appropriate to do with adolescents? So keep in mind that centers or stations allow for students to complete specific tasks in a certain amount of time and they can provide a way to easily differentiate for students of varying abilities right so you could have a center that has folders for let's say group a group b group c etc and students know which group they're in and when they get to their center right they can open up the you know corresponding directions that would be differentiated to who's in that group and then they can work on the task so it is a really easy way to differentiate i don't want to say easy because you still have to put in the work to set it up but it does allow for differentiation to perhaps happen more easily um you know centers can focus on anything word study i mean you could be reading silently for 15 minutes at a center you could be discussing a text you could be analyzing a poem you could be working on grammar you could be watching a video i mean you could be doing any number of things but I think the real question here is, do you need to organize your class this way? And I would say, um, instead of leading with the question of, ooh, should I do centers? Think instead about what is it that my students need to learn? And then what is the best way to structure my class to help them accomplish those goals and objectives? So for example, let's say that my students need help in learning how to identify incomplete and run on sentences. And then once they've identified them, how to revise them so that they are complete and obviously coherent sentences, all right? So once I have figured out what the problem is and what I'm trying to move us towards, then I need to back up and think, what is the best way to teach this? If it's through a center approach, then great, because there's nothing wrong with that, regardless of how old you are. Um, so if that's the way that it works best, then great, do it. But most likely what's going to happen is it's going to be some kind of blend of whole class, small group, and individual instruction. And centers may occasionally occur, all right, to promote learning. So the other thing I want to add about centers is sometimes it can be a great way to break up the monotony of a class, right? Um, if you sort of feel like the energy of your class is slumping, students seem a little unmotivated, it can be a good thing to throw in um, to get students up and moving and just engage with things in a different way. So absolutely, that is a, a perfectly valid reason to do it. But what I would do, you know, just to reiterate, is not to think so much about the um, structure initially, but to think first and foremost about the learning goals and objectives, and then think about the instructional practices and um, the way I need to structure those practices so that students learn best, all right? And if that's through centers, then fantastic. And if it's not, that's fine too. All right, so thanks for watching and don't forget to hit subscribe so you can catch all of my videos. Head on down in the comments and let's talk about questions that you have with centers so that we can help you inspire, motivate, and change how your students read and write for academic success.